Welcome to another 31 Days of Horror 2019 video, Toronto After Dark Edition. Yes, now this one is squeaking by. I'm having a hard time putting it in the horror category, but IMDb calls it horror. A lot of people who have reviewed this film call it horror. I consider it more of a crime drama thriller with aspects of comedy. So I think they're stretching the thriller and putting that... I mean, there are moments in the film that play kind of like a horror film, but at the same time, they're also played towards the comedy as well. So it was like, eh, I don't know. Um, but definitely crime drama. Um, and that's the film Come to Daddy. It's an hour and a half long. It's a New Zealand... Ireland, Canada co-production. Yeah, everybody's involved in this one. Um, directed by Aunt Timpson. And you'd be thinking, who the hell's Aunt Timpson? Well, he's not a director. He's a producer. This is essentially his first foray into things. Um, but you'll probably know the films that he's produced like Housebound, or Turbo Kid, or ABCs of Death 1 and 2, um, what else, uh, I think there was Deathgasm, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, he kind of, you know, decided, hey, I've made some movies, I'm gonna direct one, and, uh, this is what he came up with, um, it was, uh, He's got a, a writing credit on the film because it was his idea, uh, but the film was actually written by Toby Harvard, who is not a writer. What is this? But they've worked together um, before. On uh, I think he did do some writing on the ABCs of Death movie, um, but uh, no, he's mostly like in the art department would be his most of his credits. So you took a producer and somebody from the art department and turned him into a writer and a director and what they came up with was something very very different um the film is about a, a man in his 30s played by elijah wood you know frodo himself um who is travels to like this remote cabin which is you know yes okay as Leslie would say, you never go to a remote cabin. <laughs> That's just asking for it. It's like, you might as well just sign the death certificate right then and there and say, I'm going on vacation to a remote cabin because you ain't coming back. <laughs> um, so he's going to this remote cabin. And I mean, like, <laughs> this is the weird thing. Before I go on. Well, okay, so he's meeting his, uh, essentially his reconnect with his estranged father who who he hasn't seen since he was five years old. Um, and the, the father is played by none other than uh, Stephen McAddy, um, who... Uh, I mean, the guy's in all sorts of stuff. Uh, the Fountain. Um, Pontypool is probably where a lot of people will know him from Watchmen, Rabbit, he's, he's one of those guys who's in all sorts of stuff. You know probably more to see him for a lot of people, but those of you who follow film, like I know you do, you knew who he was right off the bat. Um, there are a bunch of other people in this film, but nobody really of note. I mean, some of them you, you might have recognized, like uh, Madeline Sam, Sammy plays a... Um, uh, uh, the coroner in this in this film and she you know what we do in the shadows you might know her from that um and there's other people most of them aren't really genre people and they aren't like big names anyways um but yeah so essentially it's this dude in his 30s going to this cabin and he's having to go to this cabin and he gets off the bus and he's got a map 
a drawn map of how to get to this cabin. That's how remote this cabin is. And yet, here's the kicker. He has to take this crazy path, but as soon as something goes bad, the police have to come here, the coroner has to come here, they just drive right up to the cabin. I don't I don't understand why he could have just got like a taxi or something there. No, he had to go through the woods and across a lake and all this crazy stuff. Like he literally had this huge, gigantic, looked like Lord of the Rings styled, you know, going from Hobbiton to the... the Lord Mordor type map uh, to get to the, his father's house when people are just driving up there anyways. Um, and uh, yeah, and then it gets kind of bonkers uh, there. It's very uh, weird, very abnormal. Some for, like I said, some for in the comedic effect, some things are for weird for the sake of being weird. Other things are for um, to give kind of a, a, the horror vibe to the film, a darkness to it. It's a very like dark comedy type thing. Um, but yet, this remote cabin has full running water, full electricity. It even has an HVAC system, i.e., you know, like furnace and such. But it's in the middle of nowhere, and at no point did I see solar panels, generators, anything that would indicate that this, <laughs> this, this, this really looked like a ramshackle kind of weird-looking house was, you know, set up, like, on the grid or anything, <laughs> but apparently it is. I don't know. <laughs> it had running water, but it didn't seem to have plumbing. They had to take baths in a bathtub outside. But they could go to the sink. So I don't know. There must have been some kind of reservoir or something. But they don't show it. I don't know. There, there were questions about that. Obviously, it's not really important. But it was one of those things where I'm looking at it going... There are registers in the floor for heating or cooling, and this is a shack. <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> um, but yeah, essentially, uh, gets to the to the uh, this cabin in the woods on a lake, uh, and uh, yeah has uh, an encounter with his uh, with his his father and and uh, things are a little really weird and uh, I mean uh, Elijah you know he, he knows how to act he's doing his thing but Stephen oh my god did he, did he you know, he's great he's great in this film like he really nails his character um, and makes it something like it's very entertaining to watch um but I don't want to give too much more into the film because that would give it away. Like, literally, if I said anything more about it, yeah, it, would, it would ruin the film, essentially. Um, but this is... See, this is one of those things where... Uh, the film has many instances, many moments, which I think a lot of people would really like. But you kind of have to get through the the drama. You have to get through the slow portions. You got to get through the weird portions. You got to get through all these different aspects of the film um, before you get to these, you know, like hit home moments that would appeal to a more larger audience, like a wider audience. Um, so it's it's one, not one of those films that I can really recommend to a general audience. I can't recommend this to a general audience. I just can't. They, I, I could see it. I, I could say, oh, I recommend you guys go see it. And then you come back and you go, what the hell was that? Why did I watch this? I turned it off after the first 10, 15 minutes. And I'd be like, you didn't get to the good stuff. Uh, yeah, 10, 15 minutes, you wouldn't even gotten to the, like, where stuff really gets off the rails. Um, 
uh, that being said, it is different. It's one of those films that kind of keeps you guessing, keeps you kind of on your toes type thing, even though it's, you know, slow in getting there and, and takes its time and doesn't really rush anything. If As long as you invest yourself into the film and watching it and you don't give up on it and you don't just dismiss it um, and you just take it all in and enjoy the funny moments. I mean, the, the audience was finding it a lot funnier than I was at the beginning, but I guess that's not surprising. I mean, the guy beside me at one point was just killing himself, and I was just like, how, how was that? I didn't... Well, that was funny? <laughs> Whatever. I guess so. Um, of course, he was the only one, I think, who was laughing at that part. But that's, that's a different story altogether. Um, but yeah, so... Depending on your sense of humor, depending on your... Um, your mood, I think, is what will really, de de you know, determine if you get if you like this film. Um, I'd say it's a solid film. It's well done. It's a like a three out of five. Um, but again, I just can't recommend it. I cannot recommend it to anyone. But that being said. Like, you, you hear me say it, there is good things about this film. It is different. It kind of goes in multiple directions. Um, it's one of those things, like, you look at Elijah Wood, you look at some of the, the, the actors who have come out of, uh, you know, like Harry Potter and the Lord of the Rings and stuff, and they've really, they made their money. Let, let's... <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. They are made. So they've been taking in a lot of those weirder type films, right? They, if a script comes along and they like it, they jump on it. This is clearly one of those cases where Elijah Wood's just like, this is different. I want to be in this movie. And that kind of says something, right? Like something where the actor does not need, doesn't need the paycheck. But he wants to be in the movie. Right? So, I mean, if you're a fan of Elijah Wood, obviously go go watch it. It's... I don't think he's really out of his... What he's done before. This isn't something where he was wanting to be in the film because it was a different character for him. I think it was more the story that was being told. Like, he just... He was real. He really liked it. Um, and I think that's kind of what you have to gauge interest on when it comes to this film. Um, you don't watch a trailer. Do not watch... I don't even know if it has a trailer. It will eventually, I'm sure, but don't watch the trailer. It'll... It'll give too much away. <laughs> um... A, because... You know, I, can say, I can't say anymore. This is the problem. Uh, but yeah, just... It's one of those things. If it comes across your table, if you happen to be looking for a movie and you see it show up, and you're not thinking, I need something funny, or I need something action-packed, or I need something that makes me think or I need something that's, you know, like straightforward or anything like that. If you're just looking for something different, something different, that's the movie. That's the movie. If you're looking for anything else, you're going to be disappointed. I think that's the way it is. I, I, I know, I'm not, I'm not selling you on this at all. Uh, and I'm not trying to though. That's, this is the thing. Uh, but yeah, whatever. I mean, it's called come to daddy like I, I just keep picturing Hellraiser when I, <laughs> you know like every time I read it I'm just like what the, oh, it's it's Hellraiser but it's not Hellraiser it has nothing to do with Hellraiser but yeah come to daddy um yeah it's it is what it is and uh if you manage to see it comment down below and let me know what you thought again no spoilers. The spoilers will ruin this movie. They just will. I know it. I know it for certain. 
So yeah, comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to know anything more specific, um, you know, put something down. And if I have to do spoilers, I will start off with spoilers so people don't, you know, read any spoilers or anything like that. But uh, yeah, love to hear from you. More 31 Days of Horror to come and the last of the Toronto After Dark. So keep watching. And uh, yeah. Again, comment. Comment down below. I, I want to know your thoughts. <laughs> Anyways, take care. Till next video, have a good one.